Okay, gearheads, you've been waiting for this one for a long time, and uh, so here it is. This is going to be the uh, Ansel Adams Zone System. Now, uh, I've been back and forth a bunch of times on on the best way to kind of explain this, and I've I've already done two tutorials that just kind of failed miserably, just because it it gets really complicated really fast if you're not careful, and it doesn't have to be. So. Um, uh, just to review, you might want to go back and look at the uh, metering uh, tutorial, the contrast tutorial, and the expose in the zone tutorial, as well as, uh, well, basically, if, if you're the first time through this, uh, you've probably just covered all those tutorials and you're, you're just getting into this one now. But if it's been a while, uh, you might want to go back and review those, as well as the scouting the location and conforming your scene tutorials. And uh, from the uh, from the meter tutorial, I'll show you how to use a gray card um, to uh, to determine the midpoint on your camera, um, and then I'll just discuss a little bit more on contrast. So part two of metering and part two of contrast will actually be included in this tutorial. Uh, so you're going to want a working knowledge of masks in whatever program you're the most familiar with, whether it's uh, uh, After Effects or Premiere or Final Cut Pro or Final Cut Pro X or uh, DaVinci Resolve. Of course, A and E and DaVinci. They have a lot more flexibility when it comes to mask, but you're going to need some sort of ability to isolate different parts of the image so that you can analyze it. Uh, I'll be using After Effects just because it uses less resources, um, and I'm going to be bouncing around uh, quite a bit. Uh, but uh, before we get into that, let's refresh your memory just a little bit. Um, in uh, If you look at this image right here, which is very similar to this one, You'll see that uh, you have your in-camera meter. This is very similar to what you're used to looking at, looking at on your camera. Uh, zero is supposed to be dead even, 50%. Uh, uh, plus one stop, plus two stops, uh, negative one, negative two, and of course each one of these hashes in between is a third of a stop. Uh, and you'll see that that correlates to zones three through seven. Uh, now, don't let that confuse you. That's not IRE. If you come down here, you can see that IRE in seven through three actually begins probably around 20% and ends around 80%, which if you go back and watch the Exposed in the Zone tutorial, you'll see that's the target that I was shooting for, uh, which is why I say uh, plus two stops or negative two stops, uh, which is a five stop range and a difference of four stops. So, uh, and the five stops, you know, of course, you have to count zero. So you get, you know, two stops over, a stop over, zero, and, you know, I think that's self-explanatory. Um, but the thing that gets confusing, or at least the most confusing I found, is when you when you look at this, uh, you see that it says 50%, and then zone 6 is 63%, and zone 7. Well, the reading on that is actually this color of gray that represents the zone itself. Um, but there are many gradations of gray going from this middle gray to this sort of skin gray. Um, and a lot of times you hear people say they want skin tone up around 63, 60, between 60 and 65 percent. Um, that's good in some cases. Obviously, you know, darker skin is not going to be there. Um, uh, but the whole point, I think, and this is where things start to get complicated. The whole point of the zone system is that when you put your exposure, when you take a gray card, you take 18 percent gray and you stick it right here in the middle. You stick it right on plus or minus zero, um, keeping in mind that your DSLR is probably going to expose a gray card at 40% and not 50%. And again, th this is how things start to get complicated when I try to explain this. Um, if, you, if you've learned anything from me at this point, you'll know that, that uh, your DSLR actually lies to you, uh, that, uh, that when it says it's at zero, it's actually not. It's actually below zero. It's about 40%. It's actually probably here in zone four. Um, to get to 50% on a DSLR, you have to expose probably a third to two-thirds of a stop over, and that'll put you right dead in the middle. But when you do that, when you actually get a 50% meeting, uh, reading uh, on your camera, then this is where the zone system really begins to take effect. What you have at that particular moment is that every single color in your image is properly reproduced if it is being lit by the exact same light as the reading on your gray card. And I'm going to pause and repeat that because 
that's the most important thing. Um, is that the light? In other words, let's go take a look at. Um, let's take a look at an image. Uh, this is, this is, uh, this is the the tutorial we did um, in the living room, and the key light here coming through the window I think was nine and two thirds or something like that, um, and I used a gray card on this uh, just to test my light meter. But you can use a light meter; it doesn't matter if you use a gray card or, or a light meter, um, depending on how your camera is calibrated. And I'll show you how to do that later on in this tutorial, or maybe I'll break it up into two or three tutorials to make it so that we're covering less information at once. But let's say, for instance, we took a gray card, um, and in, in this case I did, and I had Tara, or Tara, um, angle that gray card to where it was bouncing the light that was coming in through the window off the reflector that I had stationed outside to key her uh, into the lens, and it was reading uh, two-thirds of a stop over, or 50% from my test. And I did a light meter reading, and the light meter said to set the, the stop on the lens at like 2.8 or 4, whatever it was. And so that's where I set the lens. And so I know when I read this, when I, when I, uh, if I were to capture that gray card, it would read 50%. And I know that everything that is being touched by this key light coming through this window is going to be color accurate. In other words, her skin tone is going to be the color of her skin tone. It's going to be perfectly accurate color-wise. When it strikes the windowsill or the curtains here or the couch or her, her, uh, her blouse, that color is perfectly rendered. And then if with my rim light, if I set my rim light to the same intensity of my uh, key light, then this color, which is actually this sort of dark maroon uh, type color, will be rendered accurately. But if my lighting is more intense or less intense, depending on how many stops, then that color is going to be uh, distorted or it's going to render either lighter or, or darker than it would normally. And then that's where the zones really come in because what you can begin to do at that point is you can say, okay, I know this color is going to look fantastic if it's rendered down here in zone four instead, or actually it probably is rendered in zone four because it's red, so it's going to be less intense than green, which means it's going to fall down. It's probably going to, uh, if we go to our, uh, here, let me move some of this stuff out of the way. If we go to our chart here, you'll see that red renders at 42.1 um, when the 18% gray renders at 50. So, uh, and this is a split between like probably this color and, and this color. So it's probably going to be right around 38 or 39. So I know that if it's got the right amount of light on it, it's going to fall, you know, and this is what we're going to do. We're going to go into uh, After Effects and we're going to check that. But I just want to explain it first. Um, and right now I really like the way it looks. This is rendered pretty accurately and it looks pretty damn good. There's no noise um, and that's kind of the point of using the zone system is to get all colors accurately rendered within the camera um, and placing them within their proper zone. And if you have questions, the, all of these colors, these sort of IRE ratings will tell you roughly what zone they're going to go into. Like if you were to um, uh, if you were to discount this here, these five are your essentially your zones. Like if we go back, let me let me move this out of the way. If you were to look, zone seven, seventy four percent, you know, bumping up to around eighty percent, and then zone three, twenty six, down to around twenty. So we've got twenty, all the way up to around eighty one, with this being middle gray. So these are your zones: twenty. 35, 50, 66.7, and 81.2. And then all of these colors, which are sky blue, uh, skin tone, dark skin tone, uh, like an orange. Um, this is our red, green, red, pure red, pure, pure green, and pure blue. Um, this is like forest green, like leaf green. Uh, and I forget what the rest of the colors are called. But if you look at a color chart, you can say, okay, that's where those colors are supposed to go. This one's going to be yellow is going to end up way up in zone what is it, zone 7. Um, and uh, red's going to end up down here between probably zone 4 and zone 5. And, um, you know, uh, blue, blue's going to end up like way down the spectrum, almost down in, in, in zone, the bottom of zone 3. Um, and same with purple. Purple doesn't have a lot of intensity, so it's going to end up down there. You know, 
this blue and this purple and this blue and you know which is what they say that that sky blue and skin tone are supposed to fall you know skin tone here at 65 sky blue around 50 um, so you begin to get a sense that that when you've got accurate exposure you get accurate color but you don't have to settle for it what you can do is you can begin to push colors into different zones, the zones that they don't belong in, which will render the colors differently. And this is where you kind of have to experiment. And I'm, I'm going to stop for a second and collect my thoughts because um, I need to go back and listen to this and figure out if I confused everybody again, which I did last time. So I'm going to stop for a second. You won't notice it, but um, i got to go back and check this out. So I know some of you are saying, whoa, 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 time out. So you're saying there's only five zones, but I'm, I'm looking at 11 of them. Uh, okay, so this is, this is the caveat with DSLRs. Now this is changing. Now with, with the Blackmagic camera um, having 13 stops and uh, more cameras gaining more and more stops of uh, dynamic range, uh, this will change a little bit. In fact, uh, I think you can go three stops over and three stops under with the Blackmagic and you're fine. But let me explain with digital for now, unless you're shooting with the Blackmagic camera with 13 stops um, and uh, uh, film or RED or Alexa or any one of the higher end cameras, uh, you can basically take 10 and 0. Of course, you can just throw those out right away because uh, 10 is, uh, is pure white and 0 is pure black. Um, and you don't want that when you're exposing. It's fine if you get that in post. You can you can make black pure black and, and you can make white pure white, but you really don't want that. You kind of want some detail. You want some detail up on the top and you want some detail you know, down here on the bottom. So you can automatically take these two and just throw them out. So now there's only nine. Okay, so take get rid of 10, get rid of zero. Now you've got nine zones or nine stops because each one is a stop of light. Uh, beginning here in the middle and moving up, each one's a stop of light. So uh, with the, let's just take the GH2 because I know that camera better than any other camera uh, in terms of the lower end ones. Um, my good range is between the top of seven, which is around 80%, and the bottom of three, which is right around 21, 22%. Uh, and now I still have two and eight available to me as kind of like leeway. I can kind of let things bleed into eight and bleed into two and still have some detail. By the time I hit nine and the time I hit one, I'm gone. I'm checked out. There, that's it. So you've heard me talk about that there's seven stops of usable dynamic range on your DSLR. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven between two and eight. Those are your seven stops of usable dynamic range. Um, and about five stops of like target range, stuff that you really want to try and fit your stuff into so that you can grade it. Um, but and, and I've sometimes kind of err on the side of caution and go really flat with that. So I'm kind of using like about three stops really um, and letting things bleed into seven and, and three, uh, but kind of exposing right in this middle range because I really want a lot of detail and I really want to be able to go and paint with that image, which uh, if we go in here, uh, there, by the way, there were some that scoffed and said that uh, this was photoshopped. So this is just to prove that this scene actually is color corrected, uh, you know, perfectly. Uh, so that was the scene that we, we talked about in Exposing the Zone. And I'm able to really go in and, and paint with this image. I'm able to go in and darken up the walls back here, uh, darken up uh, the area around his hair, power into his face and uh, uh, get a lot of detail um, and retain a lot of detail but still make this sort of dark and edgy and and uh, of course uh, you might want to go refresh your memory and see what this looked like. I don't have the raw footage on my computer at the moment um, but uh, this was very very flat to begin with so let's go ahead and get that out of the way. Um, but yeah so you're uh, even if you have and this is, this is kind of why I say, people say, Cheyenne, why do you keep telling me that my 7D doesn't have 11 stops of dynamic range? Um, and I'm like, well, that's what the salesman told you. That's what the brochure tells you. And quite frankly, if you look really, really carefully, yeah, it's got 11 stops of dynamic range. Um, but you can't use all of them. You really can't. Um, because uh, as soon as you start getting into these, start in, getting into 9 
and uh, getting down into uh, to one, it's just unusable. It, the, the DSLR blows out so fast up top and just turns into mud and macro blocking down below in the shadows uh, that you can't really count th these up here. So you've got seven. So seven stops of dynamic range. Until you get a 13 stop camera, you got seven stops. So just accept it. Um, I'm not happy with it. You're not happy with it but that's what we we're working with. And now that you know that that's what you're working with, now you can begin to kind of go, okay, seven stops, let's shoot for five. Five stops, there's a lot to work with in these five stops. I mean, if you think about it, it is uh, five stops of dynamic range is 16, 32 to one. It's 32 to one contrast ratio. That's pretty dang good. I mean, 16 to one is still pretty heavy. I mean, that's like, you know, maybe exposing the, the highlights of your skin tone up here around, you know, plus one and a third, you know, down to, uh, I guess, down to, uh, how does that work? <laughs> uh, one, two, three stops, eight to one. You know, maybe, maybe you're, you yeah, know, that's probably as high as you want to go. You can go a little more than eight to one. That's a pretty good contrast ratio. If you want to go up to two on your skin tone, that's, you know, you can get your highlights there. Yeah, that's good. Uh, maybe come down two thirds of a stop to a stop to get your, you know, your your meaty skin tone, and then you've got 16 to one coming all the way down here, and that's film noir. That's that's some pretty heavy contrast you've got working there. So you can get a lot done with five stops. Ansel Adams only had 5.6, really. Uh, the rest of this was stuff that he would move it around. He would go in and, and post process images. He would add light and chemical processing. Uh, to try and push things into what he thought uh, and what scientifically they discovered rendered the image the most accurately. And th this, th again, that's where the zone system comes from, is uh, when you look at, you see a lot of these, you can find these anywhere on the internet. You can see these descriptions that tell you, okay, pure black is zero, near black with slight tonality, no texture, zone one, textured black, in zone two, average dark materials, low values, uh, showing adequate, adequate texture, zone three. And that's the bottom of the range that we're discussing here. Um, dark foliage, dark stone, landscape or shadows, middle gray, north sky, dark skin, average weathered wood, Caucasian skin, light stone, shadows and snow up here in six. You know, very light skin, you know, shadows and snow with acute side lighting in seven. You know, lightest tone with texture up in zone eight. So you're pretty much peaking up in zone eight. Uh, and then very little detail up in nine and then zero detail. It's just blown out in 10, pure black down here. Um, and there's other ones, you just, you know, you, I'm not gonna go through all of them because it's gonna take too much time, but uh, this will all be uploaded up on the website or you can just do a web search um, for the zone system and, and kind of see what falls within these zones. So you can kind of get a sense for when you're looking at the world around you, where things are supposed to go. Um, and that's kind of the whole point. So now we're going to go in and I'm going to teach you how to use your gray card to essentially set up your camera. In other words, figure out where the zones fall within your camera because it's going to be different depending on the curve of the camera, uh, the exposure curve, uh, you know, if it's an S curve, if it's shooting like a cinema mode, uh, or uh, it's never really going to be linear. I don't think they have like a perfectly linear mode anymore. I think everything's got some sort of curve to it. Um, and see how like within the middle, within these five stops, it's a pretty flat response, but then as it gets further out, it really starts to curve. You get highlight roll off, not as much as we'd like, uh, and uh, you know a shadow sort of grade where it just sort of slides down and from three down into one. Uh, and uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at that. 